right, so we've learned about what a build system is in general. Let's dive into the specific properties of the Bazel build system that make it a great choice for a lot of developers. First of these is that it is incremental. Incremental, you can think of simply as the idea that if you make a small change in an application, how long should it take to run the build and test? And if the change is really small, ideally, that's a small amount of work to do to do the rebuild or retest. Good example would be if you make a single comment in a file, should, maybe no step should need to run at all. There's really no difference in the behavior of the application. On the other hand, of course, if you make a big change or even a change that is very structural, let's say you change the version of an SDK that's used to compile the code, well, then you expect to have a slower rebuild and retest because it really did change a lot of the application. So in order for your build to be incremental, you'll have to break up anything that's monolithic, any single big step into a bunch of smaller steps. Usually this is done by breaking a gigantic application up into a smaller number of libraries, packages, modules, whatever your language calls them. Incrementality in the build system means that it's skipping a lot of steps. And the next property that we want is for that to be correct, which means that we trust whatever outputs we get from doing a build are in fact up to date with respect to any of the changes that we've made. If you've ever had to run a clean, and then your problem went away, well, that means that the build system wasn't correct. You should never need to clean. In fact, I think it's easy to fall into a trap of trying a clean every time you get results from the build system that you don't understand or that look like maybe they're wrong, which wastes you a lot of time because if clean only actually solves your problem occasionally, you're spending a lot of time doing clean, slow builds just to reproduce the exact same failure that you already saw. Now, correctness is a very difficult property to add to a build system especially if it doesn't have a, an accurate understanding of what changes can affect what results. So, for example, Gradle is very difficult to get correctness because the dependency graph can never be 100% specified. The next property we want from our build is for it to be cached. So this is largely how incrementality works, right? We can skip rebuilding something if it's already been built and hasn't changed and doesn't need to change. Now, not only can we do that on our own computer, but in theory, and in, under Bazel with remote caching, you can share those artifacts between other computers. And so if the CI machine has already done a build, those inputs are the same as the ones that you're using, maybe you can just grab that cache it and skip doing the work. In order for caching to work, the build has to be a pure function from inputs to outputs. That's another word for determinism. So determinism means for a given set of inputs, I will always get this set of outputs. There's no variation in the outputs, for example, things like timestamps or ordering of a list. None of those things vary between builds. I'm guaranteed to get the identical output in, when, when the build is a pure function. Absolute file paths are another example because in order for these cache hits to be portable from one computer to another, we can't have the absolute path on this disk showing up in the output because that may be different from the absolute path on your computer where that output would live. Determinism is a fantastic property. It means that we can also trust that the build system will, in fact, give a cache miss if we change some inputs. If the build's not deterministic, then you will get cache misses when you should get cache hits because the inputs are going to vary. Some things like, like a timestamp is going to cause anything that depends on that file to have to be rebuilt when it shouldn't need to. Interestingly, under Bazel, because the build steps are performed as sub-processes and they, they're ephemeral, they go away after they're run, it also defends you a little bit against resource leaks and bugs in, in a tool that where it's, it holds onto some state and something from a previous execution of that tool is influencing the result, which would make it, of course, non-deterministic. The next property we want is for it to be parallel. And of course, that means faster, right? So if we have a bunch of work to do and those things can be broken up into separate processes, we want those processes to be able to run in parallel using all the CPUs on my machine. And in fact, Bazel offers another feature called remote build execution where I can add CPUs on other machines. I can have a whole farm of machines that contribute resources so that I can parallelize the execution of the build even more widely. To be clear, Bazel is, is calling out to these tools, and so it can't be any faster than those tools would be on their own. Really, the goal is to add a minimal amount of overhead around calling those tools and then make it possible to run them all in parallel, even on remote machines if I don't have enough resources locally. Now, for that to work, there's another property that Bazel requires called hermeticity. And hermeticity is the idea that everything that's an input to the build is known ahead of time and is declared. So that includes the tools, environment variables, anything that might need to be present for that build step to run so that it can run the same on some remote machine as it would locally on my computer. Now, as a result of determinism and hermeticity, we get another property, which is reproducibility. 
if we're guaranteed that the only thing that can affect the output of the build is the declared inputs and that it will be the same output every time we run it, now we're guaranteed to get identical outputs for a build, even if we run it, let's say a few months from now. Maybe you have a release branch and you realize there's a bug in something that you shipped. You don't want to ship from head because a lot of other changes have landed. You want to make another release that's identical to that several month old release, except for one change that you've made. And then without a reproducible build, there's really no guarantee that you can create release artifacts that have only your new change in them without accidentally picking up other changes or having different results. And so this allows you to trust that you can ship something and not get surprising changes in the program's behavior. Three more properties that are a little bit more philosophical. So one is that Bazel is very composable. It's, it's a little bit like the, the Unix philosophy, which says, take write a lot of small tools that do a single thing. So this could be cat or sort or awk or other programs that you might be used to running on the terminal. Write those programs so that they can work well together using the pipe character. I can take any of those and create my own bash one-liner that can actually be very powerful. And the only thing that's required for this to work is that there's a convention that all of these tools should write their output to standard out as a text stream. And then the pipe character causes that to be readable by the next program in the pipeline that's reading it from standard in as a text stream. And so Bazel is very similar to this philosophy. You can take a lot of individual tools and you can compose them together in novel ways. The only thing that's required is that Bazel has a convention. These tools should output files and then the tool that relies on it should then read those input files. So a lot like the Unix philosophy. Bazel's universal. It works with basically every language and framework you can think of. Of course, the support varies widely because the plugins are written by different people, but there's really very little missing in that ecosystem. And finally, it's industrial scale. Googlers have like really banged on this thing. It's used inside of Google for a code base that's billions of lines of source code, and it scales up to that just fine. So those are your properties about Bazel. That's it for this lesson. Thanks.